Welcome to the Bedworth Bowling Club for this afternoon's Martell Inter-County Championship clash between North Midlands and Staffordshire. The situation in the championship at the moment is that North Midlands lost their opening encounter by 16 to last year's champion Yorkshire, but Staffordshire started well. They defeated Cumbria overall by 58. I think it's true to say, Bob Harrigan, who is in the commentary box with me as the association president, you've virtually got to win this one. Well, we've definitely got to win this one, Mike, to uh, give ourselves as any chance. Uh, as we all know, Yorkshire are the sitting in the drive-in seat, but this other club, this Staffordshire County, of course, are still in the hunt. They beat us today, and then go on and beat Yorkshire, then they qualify. Now, of course, last year, you won home and away against Staffordshire. 41 at home and away by two. That was a tremendous performance, and you'll be looking for something similar well, today. We should be looking for something similar today, yes, and then just hope that Staffordshire can do perhaps the unthinkable and go and beat Yorkshire for us. Right, now, as regular viewers know, we concentrate on particular games, and this game that we're going to concentrate on involves Stuart Harry from the Hornswood Club, who's playing Russell Pegram from Mitchells and Butlers in Wolverhampton. The referee for this afternoon's encounter is Tony Green from the Warwick and Worcester Association. And of course, it is Russell Pegram being the away player that is setting the first mark. A mark in crown green bowls, for those who don't know the rules, means that the jack must go a distance of 19 metres or more. And so the first ball from Russell Pegram is a good one. This, Bob, as we know from last year's visit, is a very, very tricky green. Very, very tricky, Mark. Yes, the, with all these undulations and the hill, and I, I think there's about at least nearly a 20-odd inch drop from that top far corner to this one we're speaking from, which makes it very difficult to control your weight. And, of course, these are nervous moments for both players. Um, Stuart Harry has played about 24 times for the North Midlands County Association. That's a fairly good record, um, although he did lose on this green last year against North Lancashire and Fylde, and also, unfortunately, suffered a humiliating defeat against Staffordshire in this encounter last year. So we'll be looking to improve on that this afternoon. And he has now delivered the last bowl of the first end on a glorious afternoon here at the moment at Bedworth. He's gone low, Mike, dropped below, and Russell's... Yes, and it's Russell Pengram yeah. who scores the first end. Um, Russell Pegram, of course, is a very, very good player in Staffordshire, and he is a member of the Mitchells and Butlers Club, who this year won the British Team Championships at Earlham earlier in the season. Russell, winner of the Staffordshire County Merit in 1991, has a very, very smooth delivery, well suited perhaps to this green and that's not a bad bowl although it's run through a shade now and there's number four Stuart Harry because he'll want to get in fairly soon, Bob, in this match, because he must be under some pressure. Well, he is, yeah, but like all of us, you know, you like to get in very early before the chappy starts to pick up the weight. There, he's just bowled a lovely wood there. Yeah, that's a good bowl. That'll give him confidence. Last thing you want is your opponent to have a run with the jack and get the feel and the weight of the greens. Certainly play up to it, Will Russell. He's trying here, Mike. Well, that's a good bowl. Cracker. Yeah, an excellent bowl. Uh, he's just got to play... Play couple through of feet over, play through, see if you can take the wood. You don't particularly want the jack, unless it's going to go down to Russell's back wood, isn't it, Mike? That's right. Oh, he's up, just to do the job. And that was very, very unlucky, I think. Another one to Russell Pegram, he leads 2-0. It's the old saying, Mark, the gap's worth a fortune. That's right. I always seem to find them as well, that's the problem. Of course, 
Staffordshire old rivals, aren't they, of um, North Midlands, Bob? You've had some really good matches in the past. Yes, we've had some cracking matches with them. Of course, they're very adjacent to our county, aren't they? The same borders, aren't they? Mm, yeah. That's right. And of course, what we ought to remember is that in this Martell Inter-County Championships, um, the away leg, and that's for North Midlands, is in Staffordshire. Now, what is interesting is that Staffordshire, who, of course, won that opening game, they are taking a gamble. And they're playing on a parks green at Hensford, one that's never been used before. It could be interesting because that could be an advantage in the sense that it's a very tricky green, I understand, and only with a fortnight practice, that may be the advantage of North Midlands, Bob. Well, it could be, yes. Uh, if they've never used it before, though, I, I have spoken to their president who says they've picked quite a few players from around that area who have played on the green uh, in league matches, not being a member of that club who knows something about it, but uh, as a county, they've never used it. But like us, we brought two new greens in last year and we're hoping to reap the benefits from them. Because what is interesting in this year's inter-county championships is that Yorkshire, yes, they defeated North Midlands in the first match, but I didn't think they were all that impressive. Um, and at the same time, North Lancashire and Fylde, who this year have acquired the services of the likes of Michael Leach, Brian Duncan and Norman Fletcher, they failed at the first hurdle. And really, today, although North Midlands have to win to be in with any chance, Staffordshire have a wonderful opportunity because if they win, then they meet Yorkshire in their last clash. So, for the first time for many, many years, Staffordshire could be in the driving seat because it's true to say that their record in this particular championship is pretty miserable, to say the least. Now, at the moment, that end, Stuart Harry scored two, two each. Um, the differences between this green and the green that Stuart Harry comes from, Hornswood, Bob? It, well, it, it's as big, but this is more oblong. He's, he comes from quite a big green, uh, but, but other than that it's uh there's is more undulating with different valleys and a crown slight crowns in the middle but various crowns around the green this one as you can see is predominantly like one big slope harry's a 47 year old transport manager because he, he won the big Nudiger Classic not too far away from here, Bob, some time ago, so uh, he's used to the big time. He's oh, he's bowled in plenty of the big tournaments. There's nothing wrong with his temperament and his ability. Taking his time, that's essential. One of the problems with youngsters in the game today is they want to be too quick and get the ball out of their hand, and he's running this one up. He, he likes that. Always a sign that a player likes the ball when he runs one up. And he's got it. Yeah, he's took it. He's lying two at the moment, I think. And this ball seems to be running through. But it isn't. That's a brilliant ball. Toucher. Mm, it's a toucher. It's a good start. Can be deceptive this game. I remember when we were here last time. I think you know it's easy to think that a bowl is going to be short or running through, and all of a sudden it seems to pull up or <laughs> catch the wrong ditch. Well, short coming down the hill and it makes yards mark, but going up that way, if That's you right. are short, you're terribly short. That's right. <laughs> I remember sometime at the end of last season, I was at a presentation evening with Russell Pregram, and one of the things that struck me about this man, he's confident. He's, he's not cocky, but he's confident in his own ability, and um, I think that's a, a, a good thing, a good sign in bowls, to be confident of your own ability. Stuart Harry trying here, and that's a good bowl. Good bowl. Won't want to be short, Russell Pegram. He's got two options here, Harry's bowl or the jack. And he's just gone past, left Harry's shot. Now Harry has an option of resting on that back bowl and scoring his second two of the encounter. He's already lying one. Yeah, 
Yeah. It looks as if he's short. He's satisfied mm. with one. I think he played a bit safe there. Mike. That's right. <laughs> Three across. Of course, uh, Stuart Halley will have practiced this green over the last fortnight, Bob, and he'll have sorted out two or three marks for himself. What sort of plus would you be looking for here today, in total, do you think? Oh, I think we ought to be looking for a 40. We should be looking for about 40, Mike, at least. I think it's true to say that this green probably is not running as fast as it was when you played your semi-final. Oh, no, certainly not. But like a lot of the areas, Michael, we've had such a lot of rain that That's the greens right. are all slowing down. Then suddenly you get a hot spell and you don't know, your woods are flying. But no, I should say this green's a, a good yard slower than when we played last year on it. It's another fair bowl there from Stuart Harry. See, this is the difference now, Mike. Really getting your woods up that hill. That's right. Ooh, gathered the jack, but as he knocked it onto a back ball, yes, he has. Yes, he has. So therefore, Russell Pegram, four-three, he leads after four ends. Just at this moment, while we're concentrating on this game, um, North Midlands and the other three games that are taking place on the green, it's fairly significant that Roly Pratt, who struggled on here when he last played his county match, I think if my memory serves me right, he won 21-20. He's winning 8-1 against Stuart Jones, and that would be a tremendous boost um, if the Dunlop player could come off with a good score. We certainly can't grumble at the weather this afternoon. But Beautiful, isn't it, Mark? Mm -hmm. Stuart Harry in there. Pegram ruling this bowl in. He'll keep going. Crowd are shouting, woo. That's the Staffordshire supporters. And it may just have done. Difficult to see from this angle. Nice view there of Stuart Harry, wearing his sweater provided by this year's sponsors, Toby Grills. To kick that bowl in disgust to Stuart Harry, now having a look at the other two bowls in contention. If the players can't decide, then the referee, and there he is, Tony Green, who is in the jewellery trade in the jewellery quarter of Birmingham. Plays for the Bowlmere St Michael's Club and is a member of the Warwick and Worcester Management Committee. He will now call on the assistance of the two measurers. And the current rule in the British Crown Green Bowling Association is that while the measurement is taking place, the players have no way of being near the end. They have to remove themselves completely. Charlie Fox there, Bob. I've just done an article on Charlie in one of the bowls magazines. Uh -huh. and, uh, yeah. um, Good old bowling stalwart, isn't he? That's right, yeah. The Kenilworth Club. That's right. He tells me he's more famous than Kenilworth Castle. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> One more there to Russell Pegram. And of course, if we can talk for a little moment, Bob, on performances this year, I think from a Midlands point of view, and neither you or I are from the same association, but I think the performance by Mitchells and Butlers, Russell's Pegram's club, to win that British team championship was tremendous. Tremendous event, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah it's, it, I'm always pleased when teams from down this neck of the woods show these northerners that we don't just go to make the numbers up and it was a tremendous win for them.
they've always been a very competitive club, haven't they, Mike, in the Super Cups and all the tournaments, you always see them battling away into the final stages. But I'll tell you one thing that's significant, and I think it it emphasises what the game of bowls is all about. One minute you can be up there, the next minute you're down. Mm. And they surprisingly went from winning the British team championships to losing to one of the underdogs, <laughs> a, a team called Chester Row from Shropshire in this year's Super Cup. Uh, well, there you are. Perhaps it's a new green form to play on, Chester Road, I don't know. Mm, that's right. I'll tell you what, Russell Pegram is beginning to settle into a groove here. And Harry has got to get hold of this jack oh, fairly he's gone quickly. Through there. He's picked one up and looking at the other ones. That's right. Maybe another measure. No, Stuart no. Harry was on. It looked from our commentary position that Russell Pegram was holding shot. Now, Stuart Harry here has shortened the length. Now, here's where we were saying about the weight down the hill, Mike, this shot. That jack stopped halfway down the slope. So anything so in front here is a good ball? Anything, yes. Anything by it will go nearly right down to the ditch. Well, this certainly won't go past it, Bob, I should think. It won't today. No, probably disappointed with that. He, he knew what was required, but left it a shade short. Now, this is much better. If he misses it, he's yes, going to go. Is. Now he'll go. Now he'll go, yes, you're right. Known as a clothesline job. <laughs> See, the amount Stuart's got to put into this is hardly measurable to get it over that little slope to get it down to the jack without careering through. This is just going to go, it looks a better pace to me. I yes, I think he's going to be within a yard with this one. Oh, Still here we go. Still rolling. They are, stop. They are yard mark. Which is a good bowl, I would I would have thought so on that no, mark, yes, yes, without a doubt. This won't well, stop. Oh, this won't stop. High, wide and Two handsome. More. Now, they're the sort of marks the home bowlers should be looking for. That's right. In other words, I think what Bobby's saying there is that's knowledge of the green. He's caught his opponent out. But the problem is, now for Stuart Harry, I would imagine that um, he's got away with it once. He probably won't get away with it many more times because Pegram, his experience will tell him mm. that, well, you know, I've got to be careful when I come out down here next time. <laughs> Mind you, Mike, a lot of bowlers, not a lot, but a few bowlers, I know Roll is one of them, where he, he may find the same sort of weights, but not on the same mark. Correct. Keep moving the player around the green. Don't let him settle. That's right. Once again, Bob, you've got a fairly good crowd here this afternoon. Oh, not too bad. Not too bad. Which is important. See how is the difference now. He's having to launch it up this long slope. He's gone for a, a big thumb round peg. Oh, I don't think that one will be good enough there. No, no. Neither player seem to be leading well at the moment. And this is what the game is all about, leading to the jacket. I don't think Russell's going to beat it. <clears throat> Putting the maximum pressure on the No, he's pulled up well short. Because we also have to remember, Bob, which is very important, that the sponsors Martel provide a Man of the Match award. Yes, so a beautiful engraved uh, brandy goblet, isn't it? I would think the president should have something to come in no, uh, I don't like the empty glass. I like my glasses full. That, that one's always empty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Stuart just left him far too much room. 
as you were saying, Mike, with his ability, just simply corrected his weight and won the end easy. That's right. I remember when he won the Staffordshire Merit. There were a few people in Staffordshire that were surprised. But I must admit, I've seen this man on at least three or four occasions in competitions, and he always impresses me. Um, he seems to read the game very well. Um, and let's face it, you don't win a county merit. Um, and also, he won one of the big doubles competitions in Staffordshire. I think that was in 1992. Good player. Although we won't be satisfied with that ball. Yes, Stuart's got in there, but it's not a good ball. Mm, this looks to be better. A long way away, but I would think that ball might be shot. It's difficult it's perfect to make. Perfect weight. He's, de he's definitely on. Because if I remember from last year, Bob, this is the Dave Rawlings mark, isn't it? This isn't this where Dave ended the uh, yeah, county sex? Yes. That's right. Yeah. Stewart's there. Should bend enough just to win it. Yes. Scores six across at the moment. Stuart Harry scores that one. So he takes the lead seven six. The scores in the other games on the green at the moment that Rolly Pratt hasn't gone further ahead of Stuart Jones. He leads 9-5. If you remember, he's winning 8-1. Um, Jim Robertson's behind against Steve Davis, 8-5. And in the third game on the green, the score, which is obliterated from my view at the moment, shows Steve Perry, Steve Perry 7-6 up against Vic Bailey. Stuart, good ball there. Cutting across the green now. Oh, he's trying this weight again, isn't he, Mike? Down this hill. That's right. Totally different weight. He's been beaten. Yes, that's just crept Just curled around. <laughs> not an easy green to turn over, I would have thought, Bob. No. And no, certainly not an easy green <laughs> to strike on. No, not unless you've got a lot of knowledge. You're, you're best following the same line in all the time. And that's a poor ball. I think ball he's left it. Harry. It's not going to get there today because the green's just holding that bit, Mike. No, I think that uh, we can put two down the card to Russell Pegram here. I should be very surprised if we don't. Because he's got plenty of room round the back. Yeah, it's just it. two. Mm. So it's now 8-7 to Russell Pegram. Now, for all young players watching, it's interesting. Stuart Honey tried to catch Russell Pegram out there, as Bob indicated, coming over the top of the crown, but it backfired on him. So now Russell Pegram is going to take him back almost immediately on the same mark to see whether he can improve himself with the lead ball and that Honey can't improve. And that's good tactical play from the Staffordshire man's point of view. He could be going off with that. In the ditch, he's gone. And at the moment, his tactics seem to be paying off because, as Bob says, um, Stewart's first bowl has gone into the gutter. He's improved his first wood, not by a lot. There's plenty of room there. Now, he doesn't want to give away another two here, Stuart Harry. He's going to be short. He's short. Having a look, removing one. That's conceded by Stuart Harry. 
See, looks there's the it. there's the mistake we all make, Mike, isn't it? We, we, we bowl into the ditch, and he, he really wasn't going that quick into the ditch. If he'd have stopped, he'd have won it, obviously, and That's he's right. overcompensated and bowled well short. Now, the measurers are sorting out whether it's two or one to Russell Pegram. We know it's one. It could be two. It is. So, Russell Pegram leads 10-7. You'll certainly want to get off seven, you know, Bob, Will Harry, because that's how many he got against Staffordshire uh -huh. last year. Yeah. That, incidentally, was against the man who we shall be seeing later on, Richard Everett, who also is from the Mitchells and Butlers Club, who we will be watching it because he's playing Peter Varney, and that's the last match on the green. But you see, what I was saying earlier, um, and, and which Bob was also mentioning, Russell Pegram now, he's realised that Harry... Hasn't bowled well on this little mark over the top, so he's going to keep on here, and he's certainly put a good bowl up there. And I think he's short again, Bob. He's going to start pulling away to our left. If he's short, and he is, you're right. This looks like another one. No, I would say he's going a bit too heavy here. Going to run out the back. Yes, you might right. It could have done. There's still room, and this may be not far away. He this needs is a one. better one. This is needs one. Can it stop? It's still running. It's still trickling out. It's gone it's out. Gone out. Mm. I've noticed, Mark, though, on, I don't know what sort of greens you pick. If you pick these greens with big hills, and, and my own greens the same, you'll find what, uh, some of the players, they're not worried as long as they can go up and down them, mm. where they can get the weight up and trickle them back. If they find a weight, you're in the mm. cart. So he's going straight back up there. He's going to get the weight up and down, and he'll bowl it as long as it, until Stuart gets him off. I've long held a few, Bob, but I don't know whether you agree with me that the player who plays at county level is completely different to what he comes across in club level. Now, what I mean by that is, he normally comes up against players who are fairly experienced, whether it be at county level themselves or in competitions, and tactically, because they're better than the average player, they're able to adjust, if you like, or pick up an opposing green fairly quickly. And here you've got an indication of it because Russell Pegram obviously has never seen this green before and yet at this moment in time he's winning 11-7 he's bowling that little bit better than Stuart Harry who's bowled on here for a fortnight or practiced on here for a fortnight um, but he's bowling it as he finds it and to be quite honest and fair the other problem is that Stuart Harry's probably found that when he's been bowling this recently, it's been in conditions not like today but when it's been wet but That's what normally happens, Yeah, that's why you, you sort of try to put in a, a good hour or so on the Saturday night and hope the weather stays the same and then the greens will be virtually the same weight but they're just simply bowling straight up and down the green and if you get a good weight you're struggling no matter where you go and it's very important he gets in here because he's already four behind and this is going a bit isn't it Bob? I can't see it's going away from us I think he's going to win it he has. yes he's won yeah, the I end I that was going yeah. a little bit now, I would expect Stuart now to start using the green. Go and get some bend into it or drop down the... Get some real bend into the wood. There's the score at the moment. 11-8 in favour of Russell Pegram. I was going to say, he was looking down here again. I thought never is he going to bowl down here again. Now, it's important that he's not only changed the mark, but he's also changing the land quite considerably. He's hoping to catch him on that slope at the end there. There's about seven or eight yards there, Mike, where it just goes up to the ditch. See, Stewart's put it in, but uh, he's gone a bit... I say he's gone more wider than he's no, got the right. weight. He's level with the jack. He's, his line's out. And that's a good bowl now. He's taken advantage of that, Russell Pegram. 
And that could be a difficult ball to, to beat because if Stuart Haddy plays through at it and happens to miss it, then he leaves it wide open for his opponent to collect two. And there the ball goes. He's running after it, so he must oh, fancy it in with a chance. I think it's short, I do. Yes, it, is, it does on short. that slope. And of course, Pegram's got a, a bowl for nothing here. Oh, Ooh. that was fortunate. That's right, and he may be two. One. One? Mm-hmm. That shows the blue clouds here this afternoon. Beautiful afternoon here. No, Russell should be heading down for this mark again. Well, Russell Pegram leads 12-8. And at the same time, Rowley Pratt now has gone further ahead of Stuart Jones, 14-8. And at the same time, Stuart Perry's 13-8 against Vic Bailey but Jim Robertson's 11-7 11, seven, 11 seven behind Jack Jack Robertson Jack, sorry. Jack. yeah it's not on the program it's just that I know the club's mark mm. <laughs> incidentally as you, as you know obviously he's a champion of champions uh, winner and uh, he qualified last night to go into the merit final so he's still in there firing and we were talking earlier about team performances I was at Blackpool when he won um, that champion of champions and I think that was probably the outstanding singles performance by any middle in the last year mm. again to use your words defeating the northerners on their own ah, correct there's a nice word from Russell Here again, this is a part of the green which Steve's rolls got enough in. Yes, here it comes. And Stewart's got a good bowl there. Ah, oh, lovely wood, beautiful wood. Now that is the best bowl that Stuart had his mm. bowl all afternoon, and it looks to me as Russell Pegram is going to strike. Oh, this will be interesting. Mm. Down this slope, coming across this slope, very very difficult. Here it comes. A flash of light. Ooh. Oh. Fraction. Mm. Well, he's, he must be confident that uh, Stewart's not going to beat his first wood. That's right. And this one looks is a bit tired, though. Yes. It's falling away, isn't it? That's right. Just one to Stuart Harry there. So he moves on to nine, and his opponent is on twelve. I think it's nice to see the fact that um, the county, the members of the North Midlands squad are all wearing county sweaters. I think um, provided by Toby Grills, the sponsors, Bob. But that's important, isn't it? We, we need to improve the image of this. Oh, we've got to, haven't we? We've got to really smarten up. They're by and large now, Mike. My, my, nearly the counties anyway are setting a good example. Uh, I'm afraid a lot of the teams don't set that sort of good example, but the counties are now. He's having another go up there. Ooh, lucky to hit the jack there, I think, Stuart Harry. He wouldn't have gone far, Mike. The, that slope arm on the bat had pulled the wood up. He's on line. Oh, he's through that to. gap. He's probably gone out. Be nice to try and get a a good bowl here, but he's much too, too wide. wide. He's narrow himself well this away. time. Yes, another one to Stuart Harry. Twelve ten to Russell Pegram. Thank you. 
I think one thing that, that is important is that there are more youngsters coming into this game um, and obviously the North Midlands are just one of those counties that not only have a junior individual merit, which the winner goes on to win the Junior All England, but they won a junior county side. Um, although at the moment um, they've got some very good young players, they're always looking for more. I think it's important, Bob, as president of the association, if anybody's watching this at home and fancies a game of bowls, that they contact officials of your association to encourage them to provide them with the nearest club. And who knows? Yes, we're all oh, we're welcome with open arms. Any club will. There's about 50 odd clubs. They've only got to go to the any official with the handbook, and they'll put them in touch with any club in their locality. It will absolutely welcome them. And of course, on a personal note, um, we're talking about bowls in the North Midlands. I don't think we should forget that the ladies have done very well of late, and I understand your daughter uh, won very well in the ladies' county match recently against Warwickshire. Yes, I was over there watching it. Uh, she was well up miles away, but the other lady attacked her right up to 19 all, and she just got out with a two, which kept her ego going and <laughs> continues to harass me. <laughs> you're talking about young bowlers Mike we've got a little lad bowling with his dad on our green now he's six absolutely perfect delivery and everything. He obviously he can't reach the far corners but he knows what he's doing he knows the, the, uh, the finger, the thumb the whole mechanics of the game and it's a joy to watch him and I'm sure he's took such a big interest that he's going to carry on but he's six years old, he is. That's uh, Gary Smith's son. Well, there's a gentleman who this month, in the level green game, won the English indoor triples. He's won the Waterloo, the All England. He's playing number one today for his county, Derbyshire. And he started bowling, believe it or not, at the age of four. And his name is Noel Burrows. Oh, blimey, Noel. His father used to own a pub, and he started on the green there at the age of four. So, you know, it doesn't matter what age you are, I started when I was seven. Mm. Oh, no. That's I just over two and three years ago. I think I was nearly 47, Mike, when I started. <laughs> <laughs> right. We've now moved on, and the score at the moment shows that Russell Pegram leads 13-10. There's not much in any of these games. There at the isn't, moment, is there? Nobody's pulling away. No. On, on two of them, we're down. Stuart's got a fairish wood here. Well, he's gone through about a yard, but it's not too bad up in that corner. The thing is, with this particular mark, mark you, can, you can bowl into it many ways. It's just the weight of this one. That's right. I know that because I got beat here the other day on exactly the same mark. <laughs> <laughs> By Dave Robinson. Yeah. I want to ask what the score was. <laughs> Just double figures, I think, Mark. Russell Pegram dropped that on the top here. I don't think he's going to run down. Although he scored one, he'd be disappointed with his second ball there because he had ample opportunity to get two. I'll tell you one thing, Bob. Dave Rawlins, our sparring partner and probably the player with the biggest number of caps, was telling me earlier on this afternoon he's just come back from Rhodes on Thursday. I think he's brought the sun back with him. Oh, I think he has. He is a bit brown, isn't he? Mm. Of course, the miserable devil forgot to bring the cigars. Another good bowl there from Russell Pegram. Mm, I don't think he's going to catch Russell out down this hill no more. Not this way. He's been bowling it well, hasn't he? That's right. This is a poor bowl from uh, Stuart Harry. Off land, overweight. Yes, that's Russell's going to pull up. 
Yes, but he's probably good enough for two. Oh, he's in for two. Yes, that's right. Mm. But it will be a poor second ball if that counts. Well, he's got to get by, he's got to get by. He's by, so he's got a chance. Still not just Fraction enough. short he was. Mm. So that's 15-10. To the man from Mitchells and Butlers in Wolverhampton. He'll keep it short now, Pegram. He realises that he's got Harry a little bit under pressure. I'm surprised... Um, in actual fact, Bob, but when Stuart Harry's got in, he hasn't gone for the corners. Uh, he hasn't really extended the length by any means on the green of this size. Oh, uh, look at that. It's a yeah, perfect it's wood. A yes, one. I can see what you're saying, Mike. Um, I think he's been trying to catch him out more by weight, but I suppose at the end of the day, the older days is as if you're down, go for the corners. But uh, I don't know whether Stuart fancies these corners. Oh, there's a lovely reply. He's just short, though. That's when you want it going for you. He's going in again, just round the back. That's right. Now, this could be an interesting ball that Stuart Harry's going to send here. He's asking Russell Pegram who he believes is in, and Russell oh. Pegram, he's been a bit cagey. Now, the referee's going. Tony Green. Now he's you, he'd been a jeweller involved with watches, he, he'll get it spot on, I would think, Tony. He knows his decision's important, and he's Enjoy indicated... It. One down. And he's one down. Now... Is he up? That's the question. And if he isn't... Oh, that's a bad one. Yes, it is. One thing I always think that uh, I always like watching the Northerners for because they're never Mark, short. Is they're never short. Yep. Mm. Even if they're they're one down and they could be two with an overplayed wood, they all seem to prefer to be rather overplayed and go for two as rather trying to bowl perfect weight to win one. I remember three or four years ago in the Waterloo handicap when Brian Duncan won it. In the quarterfinals, he was 20 across and he was one down. And he played through the end, as you're indicating, and OK, it was a fortunate rub that gave him the shot he wanted. And many people said he was lucky. And I always remember he responded by saying, yeah, I was. But if I hadn't been there in the first place, the luck wouldn't have been with me anyway. Mm, correct. And that demonstrates it perfectly. <laughs> so this is looking uh, a little bit sad for our man from Hornshwood. 16-10 down. At the same time, Stuart Perry has gone 17-12 up against Vic Bailey. After initially looking to be having a good card, Rowley Platt now has uh, found his little shade more difficult. He only leads 16-14 against Stuart Jones. And in the other encounter, game number two, Jack Robertson, rather surprisingly, who had a good win on here in the semi-final last year, trails another Mitchells and Butlers player, Steve Davis, 16-12. And again, this little mark again, mm. over the top by Russell Pegg. He's got a good weight, hasn't he? Yeah. I've seen this so often, visiting bowlers. Just go up and down the hill. Stewart's just, just rested on him and fell in. That could be significant. Now. Can you get over that last slope? I don't think it's going to trickle down. I don't think it's going to trickle down, no. Well, Stuart holds one. He won't want to do anything silly. He's not up. He's satisfied with that one. Now, 
I think if I was Stuart Harry, I'd be saying to myself, well, we've fiddled around for long enough. I'm going to take you out into the country and test whether, Mr Pegram, you're able to reach these He's corners. Going around Peg here, thumb up this slope into this big hole at the top corner. And there's the jack. The bias on the jack has indicated there, swinging round. Now we shall have a good view of this bowl now as it arcs round towards the jack. Then it is. Fair bowl that. Probably those bowls, two pound lead. twelve ounces, something like that. That's the average weight of a crown green bowl. Two ten, two twelve. I this is about the biggest curve on the green, this part, where the woods really bend round. It just bent round the bank. See, what happens there, if you don't really get above the jack, so it falls down to it, if you get sort of just slightly below the jack before you go in, start, the bias starts working, it starts to come back on yourself on this mark. Well, that's a good ball. There you are. Mm. That's the way you've got to win it. And I'm always surprised if we don't see a strike here. Nothing to lose. Yes, he indicates to the referee. Good theatre for the sport, this. Wakes up the audience. There it goes. Clutter. He's got one out. Difficult to see who's indicated. One to Stuart Perry. One to Stuart. Stuart Perry. Stuart Harry. <laughs> It's the only shot, really, that Pegram had, though, wasn't it? Yes, he couldn't. Uh, it would have been a brilliant shot to have beaten that toucher on that mark. Now, another big swinging round peg mark. Right the way around. And as we speak, first blood to the North Midlands in the shape of Stuart Perry, who's defeated Vic Bailey 21-12. Good start, that, Bob. Very good, isn't it, for the young man? Well, it is, and it's more significant that Vic Bailey, who's one of the most experienced players in the Staffordshire side, he had a good win against Cumbria, if my memory serves me right, very much so. And I think it was a single-figure card. And Vic's been under some pressure lately in the county side, but he came back with a bang and... Um, He'd done well there, the lad from Camden. In this moment in time. Just a fraction out, Russell, is there? Mm. At the same time, Rowley Pratt only wants one in his game at number one against Stuart Jones. Good bowl here, nice by Stuart. Nice by Stuart, yes. I fear. Maybe it's another. Well, I don't think he will strike at this one. I think he'll bowl it. He is. Yeah, yes, he's he is. got two goalkeepers behind the jack. Yes, that's the they? problem. Always, I don't think he's up. He'll die on that slope anyway, in front of the woods. No. Well, he way. may as well have struck. Bobby. He might as well have <laughs> done. Yeah. I think one of the significances of these two teams this afternoon, you no, know, Bob, is that in the main they come from two sides, Hornchwood and Mitchells and Butlers, who've probably been in more finals in the Super Cup recently <laughs> yes, than any other club that, in the Midlands. Yeah. It's obviously they think quite a bit of M and B. I say they spaced them all out. That's right. Every other player is going to be an M and B bowler. Mm. They did come over here couple of years ago in the Super Cup to play the local club on this green, which obviously is a different kettle of fish to play in the county on it. That's and right. they, they got defeated by 70 shots. But still, that's over 31, Mark, where you can get big scores, not 21. And it's second blood again to the North Midlands with Roland Pratt from the Dunlop Club beating Stuart Jones, the winner of this year's Nordley Spring Open, 21-14. Another good win by Rowley. Very good, yeah, he'd be pleased with that. 
I mean, a quality player he's just beaten, and, and Rolly was absolutely disappointed. He was devastated at his form at Nudigat. He was saying to me he thinks he'd won about 15 county matches on Nudigat, and he has to go and choose the one <laughs> against Yorkshire to dip out. Stuart Harry's just bowled a fair wood, just just yes, touched the jack. That's good right. wood. Just getting the upper hand against Pegram at the moment is Stuart, and he wants Can to he keep get by that. this. He's got by it. Oh, that's oh, a good ball. Oh, cracker! That is an exceptionally good ball Very there good. by the MMBs player. Seventeen fourteen, he leads. Stuart was just beginning to claw himself back into it. There's a lot of people in your team, you know, Bob, associated with roads. If you think about it, Roll is a lolly driver. This man is a transport manager. <laughs> Rolling sells second-hand bangers. I mean, you know... <laughs> second-hand, you'd be disgusted with that uh, title. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a good shot here. Close up shot there of how far that ball, lean ball from Russell Pegram, is from the jack. Better in front than behind. Here he comes, just wants to pass it. Gone out. He launched that, didn't he? He did, yes. Now, this is important because Russell will be looking for two to be within two shots of victory. And clinch Staffordshire's first success of the afternoon. Oh, he's left it well short. He has. Oh, he's putting the pressure on Stewart. He's got to get by them. Nice delivery. There's the ball. It's an important one, this one. Oh, this isn't short. This isn't short. It's not the cameraman no, over. No, is it the cameraman? Two more. As they say, on the pink, Russell Pegram. He Ooh, leads 19-14. He had a rush of blood there, didn't he? Looking a bit uh, sad for himself is Stuart at the moment. The old team manager, Mark Robinson, standing next to the end, looking a bit disgusted. <laughs> <laughs> it's a new thing in Crane Green Bowls, isn't it, over the last five or six years, team managers? Team managers, yeah. Mm. Well, just Staffordshire, uh, they have an El Supremo, don't they? <laughs> yes. One man picks their county side. That's right. Only trouble with that is, Bobby, take all the glory when you win, but you don't take some stick when they lose. <laughs> <laughs> Mind you, that's better. I remember when I first played for Warwick and Worcester, there were about 37 people on the selection committee. It took them four and a half hours to pick the side. <laughs> oh, is that how you got in, by the casting vote? <laughs> 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 now Russell is looking to get at least one of the two he wants after not a very good first bowl and he looks as if he's got it that's a good bowl that's a good one mm. again Stuart Harry under pressure all eyes on this bowl from the North Midlands well, he hasn't left it he's down Come He's on. just not going to run. Oh, Once Russell pegs him. He wants one now. And the other game out of the first four, which is still on the green, shows Jack Robertson trailing Steve Davis 17-16. So... Russell Pegram is looking for a good lead here. And we shall soon know, and that doesn't look a very good one. He's about three yards short. Mm. And really, Stewart ought to beat that. Well, every time he's gone up here, he's gone hurtling through. Oh, perfect wood.
and Russell won't want to be short. And he's not. He is. He is. He looked as if he was just going to well, come Stewart through. should be able to slide by there. He's got about, what, two yards all round the jack, so he's no need to go near them woods. And he's trying. And he wants every one. He, he left it short. Mm. He really got nothing to lose there. So he gets 15. And pressure's all on the Hornswood player, of course. In fact, he started off last season well, uh, if I remember, in county matches, did uh, Stuart Bob, and then he struggled a little bit. Um, and of course, I think once you start losing perhaps two or three, then you really are under pressure. Well, you are, aren't you? You keep thinking, oh, am I going to get dropped? I've got to start performing. Because things have got a little bit more competitive in the county of late. Now, now this could be better. He, he's he's using this hill instead of bowling straight down. It's he's bowling diagonal across it. So I suppose he's trying to catch him out on weight and line on this one, Mike. That's right. And he wants a good one here. Because if he doesn't, he's in trouble. Mm. It's not as bad as it looks, but... The problem is, if Russell gets one past it, he really puts Stuart under pressure. He'll start to go away. Because the green isn't running like it normally but that's is. One that's it. one it. Yeah. That's game on. That's game on. It's not going to take a brilliant wood to win this end. Hey, is he down? That's the problem. If this is short... Is he down? He gets over this little slope, he will be. There, if it'll come down that bit. Nice wood. Mm, that's it? Not too bad. So fair wood on that, Martin. Mm -hmm. To use a Toby Grills pun, he saved his bacon, I think, Bob. <laughs> yeah. Or has he? No, this one. It, this one starts to bend back now. Look, here it oh, yes. bends back on this mark. Oh, that lovely. was a very good no. ball to end on. So that deserves game, that win, Mike. Yes, in the words of Bob Harrigan, president of North Midlands, recognising the skills of the opponent there. 21-15 to Russell Pegram. So at the moment, two wins and one defeat. And we're just waiting now for the players for the next match that we're going to cover to come onto the green. There's referee Tony Green there shaking hands with Tom McDickin in blue and David East in red. Before we concentrate on this game, just to give you the update on the match so far, North Midlands had another winner uh, and that now stands at home that they lead by nine. Um, but away... Even more importantly, North Midlands have a 17-shot lead. Three winners there, Bob Gilfillan, 21-18. Neil Hancox, 21-15. Peter Spencer, 21-12. The only loser, Dave Bedette, 21-20. So at the moment, overall, with four games completed at either venue, North Midlands lead by 26. What do you have to say about that, Bob? Very good start, isn't it? Very good, especially the away team. Only one loser, and that's a 20. Very good. I see the old man, Bob Gilfillan, there again. Yes, we're pulling back to number one. He's done the business, 21-15. i tell you what is a very good winning that away side. The lad Hancox over Glyn Storer, last year's semi-finalist in the All-England. Mm. Nigel changed clubs last year. He went from the Kenilworth Club to the Walsgrave Club. He's, I think he said he wanted to rejuvenate his interest, but... Considering he went in our top league and lost one game and won the averages and had a, a really cracking season, we brought him into the county and a hey oh he's he's going full steam ahead, Mark. Right now to concentrate on the match that we're covering. Um, I noticed the sound effects has just arrived. Reg Poynton's just come round the corner. Has he? Oh. Well, we're all right now then for drinks. And first blood there to Tom McDickin. 
1-0 he leads now interestingly David East the player he's playing was also a member of the successful Mitchells and Butlers at British Team Championships winning side an exceptionally talented player but when his player when his county played Cumbria in the first game and they won overall by 58 and he was the rabbit and that's the terminology used in bowls when someone loses quite significantly because he surprisingly only got six so he's got something to prove today Tom McDickin of course comes from the club round here Bob he bowls for the Bedworth uh, club up in, in Bedworth itself this is the Bedworth Rugby Club based here his club is based in the park he plays for Bedworth X Service in the Miners Welfare Park he bowled for many years for Nudigat but another polar who's changed clubs, Mike, and he's gone up there with his other fellow bowler, Jack Robertson. They now bowl both for the ex-service club in Division 2 and doing very well. And, of course, Tom was one of the winners against Yorkshire, 21-17. Although, last year, significantly, he was one of the three losers you had against North Langston File on here. Real character, this lad is. Real character. just fired at that mic and missed it so yes Tom and Dickin will be very pleased to have got off to a good start he leads 2-0 one of the things about Tom he won't have the problems that he would normally have in wet conditions like I have with glasses so that's an advantage one of the problems with people who wear glasses when they bowl is that they always have to comp compete in wet conditions with glasses steaming up but no problem with that today. It's a beautiful day here at the Bedworth Club. And once again, it's true to say, Bob, that the club itself have done you proud with the facilities and so forth. Crackers, aren't they? they we've, this is our second visit here. No complaints whatsoever. Laid everything calm. And Ken has provided the green in perfect condition. Perfect condition. This is a good round peg the bowling might look at this the bowling up starting the wood off what 10 yards outside the jack there isn't many greens you'll do that i'll tell you one thing bob you know with all the knowledge that you seem to have of this green you tell me you lost the other day when you came oh well, that's easy that's easy it's all right having the knowledge it's having the ability to go with it <laughs> and that's why you're on the selection committee and not in the team oh yeah so Right, now we've played three ends, and the advantage is with the local Bedworth player. He leads 4-0. Yeah, I'll throw it right up the hill. i tell you what, Bob, a single-figure card now, and I think you could say you'll be well on the way to a victory. Mm. That's not a bad ball. Very good weight. It's perfect weight. It's slightly. The lad's got a better line here. You don't want to be too much inside. Oh, he isn't up. You watch it go now when it's not up. That's right. That's a good bowl there from David East. That'll give him a bit of encouragement. So he scores his first point of the afternoon. Yeah. 
Now, very significant here. David East is extending the mark quite significantly. And, of course, the green he bowls on and Mitchells and Butlers in Wolverhampton is a very big green. Mind you, he won't be pleased with that. That's virtually gone back to Wolverhampton. <laughs> <laughs> They're bowling every bit of 50 yards up here, Mike. That's right. Very much so. See, with all these big swingers, you'll get right outside the jack. and A very good bowl there. Bend, bend it round. He's better line this time. Oh, he's stuck out. Wonderful chance here for two. that. Here we go, watching this ball now, arcing into the end. This should be two for the Bedworth player. No, it's going to go, it'll go away. He's inside. Mm. It hasn't gone far enough. I don't think. Only two. Tom's already claimed two, Mike. <laughs> Still claiming two. That's right. Mm. So he leads. 6-1 He's a Burns expert, you know, Mike he, he can quote it verbatim Burns expert? Oh, yes, he is oh. You hear him on Burns night And on the away coaches If you ever get him to sing uh, Phil the Fluters well, mm. Oh, he's brilliant mm. Talented lot, these new North Midlands <laughs> players <laughs> Yeah We could see this end if Del Boy moved out the way a bit. Get on now, sweetie. Ball coming in here, which looks much better from David East. He's got a good wood here, hasn't he, Mike? Look at this. Yes, he has. I think one thing, Bob, that we remarked at the start of the program about the gamble that Staffordshire had taken at home and at the moment it looks as if that gamble uh, hasn't come off. It's backfired on them hasn't it? Mm. As much as bringing uh, David East down here has backfired I think on Tom McDickin because I think he's going to be two down. I'm just, just I was just looking in the wayside, Mike. I see Pete Spencer from the local club where we are today. He's had another fine win, 21-12. Mm, talented young player. Mm. Of course, a reminder that it's important that the North Midlands win this today. They, in their last match, played Cumbria, who I think it's true to say, without being disrespectful, are probably one of the weakest counties in the inter-county championships. But, in saying that, Yorkshire, who are favourites, and of course the title holders, they ought to beat Cumbria today. And it is whether Staffordshire can find the green to upset them at home. Because I've always believe, Bob, that Staffordshire themselves on paper have a strong team. The only mm. problem with Staffordshire is they don't seem to be able to put it together on, on the day. They've got uh, players who travel all over the place. Um, people like John Turner, Mel Evans, Cliff Johnson. All top Richard quality Everett. class players, aren't they? They just simply can't get it together as a, a county on the day. And this is the best end they've had there, this pair. I think Tom's going to whistle by. Yes, and he's left another two to David East. David East has collected his fair share of titles in the Staffordshire area. I remember him being a very young, a good young junior player also. Oh, 
It's a nice mark this is Mike, it's uh, like a snake this mark is, thumb. Got to get the correct line over the top of this hill. Here's David Bolden it now and it starts to drop now, then curl back towards the jack round this wood. Well this doesn't seem to be far, I know it'll run through but uh, it is, yes it that's does. That's it see, but you just got to get the weight, but that's the, it's a, it's a lovely mark to bowl this is. should be two I would Thumb think to David it's uh, of course Tommy's a left hander oh he wanted oh. to pass that just one be a little bit disappointed there will Tom because if my memory serves me right Tom used to play where the last county match was played mm. for some considerable time didn't oh, he oh he played for Nudigan for years mm. certainly a different type of green to this one <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This seems to be the mode these days building greens like this, Mike. Um, the old days, there used to be, what, 12 inch crowns, perfectly symmetric from the middle to all the sides. And But now people who've been laying greens in this county have all been building as hard as greens as they can to obviously give themselves a big home advantage. I think the significance of <laughs> the first matches this season, if my memory serves me right, three counties, and I can't truthfully remember who they all were, all scored 203 points. <laughs> now, I noticed that when I was looking at the results, and I thought that's absolutely amazing that three mm. counties out of the 15 could score 203. One of the quirks of the game, Mike. That's right. Here's Tommy going for this mark again. He's got to wait now because the short wood's come across his other end. I'm trying. Now, last year in this game, Tom McDiggin played away in Staffordshire and won 21-13. So that was a very good performance. And surprisingly, at that in that particular match, David East was a reserve. Mm. I don't know whether he's held up in time or whether Tommy's wood over there on the the right or the left of the... Having a close look, he yes, signalled the one, Tom, Tom McDickin, so he takes an 8-5 lead. He's gone for a good long mark into this. And that tries the first time. He's really stretched Saucer him. again over here. And that's a good ball. On that mark, I would have They're said. They're bowling it on a falling mark, aren't they, Marcus? That's right. He looks Almost inside to me. Yeah, oh, here he goes. Oh, now. right round. Now, this is the mark, more so than perhaps in the first game that I remember Dave Rawlings bowling last year. Mm. Um, and certainly, if my memory serves me right, David was behind in his game, and he used this mark very well and got himself out of trouble. So perhaps um, Tom McDickens looking. He's gone well through with his second one. Uh, yes, yes. David's got fair weight if he's high enough up the green. That might have won it, or it might yes, have run I would out. Have thought that was a won it. Difficult to see from this mm. distance. David Tom is short to wood and be David's wood that's gone through. Which is soon now. And it was David East who'd stopped in time. Mm. So he collects another point. 8-6 is the score now in favour of the North Midlands player. And at the same time, on the green in the other matches, 
five pits away from the Woodfield Club from Staffordshire is beating Peter Dewis 18-12 offsetting that Jim Robertson is winning against Nick Newey also from Woodfield 12-5 and in the third game it's on the green at the moment at number six Billy Pitt also from the Johnson Butlers is just one ahead of Steve Jones Yes, that looks as if that's a fair bowl there from Tom McDickin. Certainly forcing his opponent to play up to the end, and if he misses all, which oh, he hasn't. Oh, no, he's got the wood. You're up, you create your own luck, Mike. That's right. But he couldn't have been far off the line, could he, if he's hit that wood? No, no certainly not. He's got to try and do the same now with this one. And I think he's way on the he's bottom side. the... If he's pushed him out enough, Dave is looking for two now. That's right. Now he's satisfied with one. Still nothing in this game. Confidence must have been affected, David East, by that mauling in Cumbria. So he'll want a good performance this afternoon. But I think you know, um, Bob, uh, perhaps the same applies to Staffordshire as it does to your county. Unlike Yorkshire, and certainly perhaps now North Lancashire and Fylde, and to a certain extent even Warwick Worcester, you haven't got strength in depth. No, we. I think we're about the second smallest, aren't we? I think Cumbria's right. the smallest county. We come second to that. But no, definitely we haven't got the, the depth to choose from. But having said that, we've had a marvellous last six years you or have. so. That's right. Got a nice delivery, David East. And ball, bowl arcing across the green now. Certainly one, it could be two. You begin to find a bit of weight now, the Mitchells and Butlers player. <laughs> yes, that's gone out the back. Throwing the mat in there, Tom McDickin. I think Petrie Dewis has just got beat, hasn't he, Mike? Yes, he has. That's a, a blow for the North. Oh, that is. Petrie Dewis just scored 12 against Clive Pittaway from Woodfield, one of Staffordshire's top clubs. And in the game that we're covering for the first time, it is David East who's gone to the lead. He now leads 9-8. Tom's got the weight all right here. Oh, yes, that's the best ball he's wood. put up all afternoon. Mm -hmm. Tom McDickin. And David East will certainly want to play through at it. And he has. He can either knock his own in, take the jack, rest his oh, opponent he's too out, low. he's too low. Well, there should be no danger to be short here. May have a chance of two. No! Oh, that's just what you don't want in a county match. Tom McDickin there knocking David East in. Commentator's nightmare, Mike. Prophesize something and the that's opposite right. comes up. <laughs> Dave Rawlins is combing his hair, Bob, before he goes on the green. I don't Has know. he got any? <laughs> Should be an interesting encounter that one between Dave Rawlins, who bowled so marvellously on this green last year against North Lancashire and Fylde, and against Billy Bowater, one of Staffordshire's most experienced players, who comes from a lovely little club in the Black Country called Dudley Dell.
I don't think Tom McDickin is bowling as well as I've seen him bowling the past so far in this game. But he's not struck a consistent weight, has he? No, that last shot would have done his confidence a lot of good. And he's two down again here. Well, he could save one. The other one's what? Got a foot away? That's right. And I wonder whether he's there. He got it away a little bit ladylike, to use an expression. Oh, I think it'll get there. Do you think he will? Yeah, no, that's he's not, he's he's running nightmare, the isn't it? That's right. Well, saying two. the weight was all right, that's he's right, running to the back of it. That's right. So that's what the game's all about. In two ends, he's knocked his opponent in and gone into the back of the other end. That's it. Mm. So the Staffordshire player goes into a 12-8 lead. Tom running out again here. He could have gone out again, Bob, I don't know. No, David's picking one of his woods up. He's no, he hasn't. No, Tom, it's Tom pulled is in. He, he certainly wanted that. Twelve nine. Must be unsure of what to do at the moment, uh, Tom McDickin. He's struggling. I still think the same comment applies, Bob, and I don't know whether you agree with me, but same as Stuart Harry. He doesn't seem to want to take David into the corners at all. Well, just to test him out. Yeah. I suppose he hasn't gone round most of the parts he wants to try first before he... <laughs> That's right. Before he has a go in the corners. Well, so many bowlers really like to sing the corners, Mark. There's not, not many, is there? really want to predominantly go straight from, from the word go. Mm. There's only one I can think of, and that's why he's the game's number one. Because uh -huh. <laughs> he knows everybody else doesn't bowl the corners. <laughs> Mind you, Reg Pointon always used to tell me he was the best corner bowler in the North Midlands. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, dear, what's happened here? Could have done some damage done there. Looks as like if they're both touching the jack. Undecided who shot there, I think. Everybody's having a look. Put a postcard between them. Now the referee's going to have a look. It looks as if they're both touching, aren't they? They are, yes, mm. definitely. I think you need the old five-pound note to slide in between them, Mark. In actual fact, Bob, funnily enough, I was up in the north last week, and I was asked by the sponsors of this year's Bassmasters for an idea, like they're having golf or darts, 147, hole in one. And I suggested to them that perhaps an opponent's two bowls touching the black, uh, touching the jack after the end is completed. And I'm pleased to say they took it on board, and if anybody in the Bass Masters, when the end is completed in this year's competition, has both his bowls touching the jack, he'll collect a first prize of £500. Oh, you deserve it at all, because I've never right. seen, I've seen two woods of opponent and yourself that right. touch, but never never two of the same bowler doing it. Mind you, I did say say it in front of Brian Duncan and he indicated in the final if he's playing his biggest mate Norman Fletcher 
and both his balls are touching the jag. Then he's going to stop Norman bowling that last ball, proceed back again, offer him £250 to miss. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Humour in this game is important. Back to the game that we're following. And that now has seen David East take a 14-9 lead. Mm, you're going to get away a little bit, isn't he? And I'll tell you one thing, Bob, you've already had a 21-12 defeat in the middle four. You can't afford another one. Although at the same time, it must be said that uh, Jim Robertson is doing better than his compatriot Jack because he's leading Nick Newey 16-5. going to go through a bit well, I think Wouldn't he could have won it though yes that's right this will certainly be a confidence booster to young David East after his is Tom down blow in Cumbria I don't think he's got there oh no he's stopped well short hasn't he yes I think he has mm. he's not looking very happy at the moment is the Bedworth player he throws in the mat a little bit disgusted David East collects the jack. And there we are, 15-9, that's the score. Certainly the Brewers player, well in command. <laughs> There's a good view there of both players. David East leading, trying to get a good ball. He doesn't look to be that far away. Got a sort of round delivery, hasn't he, Tom McDee? Yes, he bowls out and in again, isn't he? That yeah. wouldn't be in the coaching Hard manual. To follow. No. Yeah. <laughs> it's good enough to beat that wood, though. Yes, it is. Well, he's up. He's got to hit something. Oof. That's the best thing to do, hit your own. That's right. Whether it's done enough, I don't know. I would have think Tom would want to ask there. He he oh, he hasn't bothered. And he's probably got a better view than we have, and you must fancy that he's in. Looking for another, and trying for another, mm. and may have got it. The screen knowledge there, turnover, two. Mike. That's right. Mm. So, a very important two there. Tom looking for a good lead bowl again and unfortunately he certainly hasn't got it so there's David East peculiar little delivery he's got also but most of these players develop their own individual styles he's going with a bit of speed here yes he looks to be travelling a bit I must admit He hasn't gone that far. No. Nope. Just can't no. see this jack right down in this corner, Mike. Very deceptive. He's bowling into the top corner, and that ball's gone hurtling through again. It certainly left him a chance with two. Very important, too, to the young player from Staffordshire. Although he's got to stop, put plenty in. Mm. He might have gone out the back. Yes, he has. Well, he's only one down, is it? Uh, Tom's having a look, but it seems as though he believes that his opponent may be in, but it's difficult to see. Yes, one to David East. So he leads 16-11. I think it's easy to be critical from the commentary box, uh, Bob, but I don't think there's been a put good performance by Tom Dickin at all. Not to his usual standard, is it? No, he hasn't seemed to be able to lead to the jack when he's had it. No.
still if we had all 12 players buzzing Mike it'd be an easy game wouldn't it it would that's true definitely I think that is why it's important if a player has one game or maybe even two games when he's a little bit off you don't drop him oh yeah you got to you got to give him the chance the other factor is is that some players seem to be always playing away well they're not going to have marvellous records playing away are they no, that's so true. we do bring them back to play at home I think that's the difference to when I used to play because I can remember that if you lost one you were out and, it, oh. it, and I can also remember if you got 20 away you'd be out and that's fact oh, well, that's we've got a bit more professional I say that's a bit balmy it, it is yes I right? say if you got 20 away you've done your job oh, well it, it wasn't always the case I can assure you He's smiling now. Oh, dear, dear, look at that. A smiling Tom McDickin. It's to his credit. Well, I suppose he's just picked up a shilling somewhere. <laughs> a Scotchman, you know. <laughs> well, he's smiling ran into the back of David's Wood, but I don't know whether David's Wood's just... Oh, he's not the jack through. Oh, he's down. Be... No. Oh, I don't know. He's followed it through, in line. and he's still down. Mm. I bet he's not smiling now. Well, 17, 11, within four shots of a very, very important win for David East. And just to keep you up to date, in the other game, Jim Robertson, he needs two now against Nick Newey, 19-10. And that's a little bit of a surprise in the sense that Nick Newey He's a very, very competitive player. He's won quite a few competitions in Staffordshire. And David East is waving that ball on. That's a sure sign that he believed it's short. But it's not bad. There's been plenty worse than that counting today. What about this one, Bob? Well, I think Tommy's got the pace. He can just niggle ball. He's got the pace all yes, right. Yes, he has. It's a good ball. Oh, that's not a bad one. He's got perfect weight there. He's only a foot or so on the side, but it's perfect weight. This one's taken a long time to come round. But Needs to be there. And he mm, is. He's there. And that's a good ball. That is a good ball. If it stops. It's oh, belly it's fell over now. I don't know. David will soon tell us. Well, Tom seems to believe that he's down because he's already played the ball. David fancies his own. Yes, I think I would if I was uh, him, but... Well, this one's trying then, Mike. That's right, it is. This one's trying. He's gone into the back. Well, uh, what he's done, I don't know. David's indicating that he believes he's giving that, that Tom's last one. Mm, good shot with Tom. That's mm. right. Very important one as well. Here's a classical left-handers mark, Mike. That's right. Off the side of the crown. You try and find my land if you can. He looks to have a fair pace with his ball. I don't know. You, you, oh, no. No, it's... Well, I don't know. It might stop on today. Usually they go straight off. No trouble. And yeah, it's gone. It's gone. Hmm. Thought so. Anything short now for David East? Yes, he only wants to challenge Tommy to get by. This doesn't go off. No, he'll end up with a fair wood here, though, Mike. You watch it keep rolling down this hill. Yeah, look, it's going to go past the jack. I'm trying. Dead level with it. Puts the pressure pressure now under Mc. He seems to be going again, Bob. This, this is surely. Could be, it's nearly as fast as the other That's one. That's right, isn't it? yes. If you don't get any bend into it, it just goes straight off. Oh, yeah, he's, got, he's a lot wider. He's coming round now. He looked as if he was on the M1 motorway yeah. for London. And I'm not so sure that he's won it. It's, it's difficult to see from this angle. That was rather surprising. Usually you can't hold woods on once they start coming down that slope. No. Well, this is much inside that land, and it's all on pace now. I say he's got nice pace here. He's running down all right. Well, if he's one, he's two. But on the other hand, he could be one down. 
Looks like it's difficult to, to judge. I don't like the way he slung the mat down. I don't think he's that confident. No. Oh, he's yeah. conceded one. No, he fancies the other. Two. And he's conceded them. So, therefore, David East requires two for a 21-12 victory. Well, how did he and lose? Nick Nui, Nick Nui has just thrown the mat down, which indicates that his opponent, and it's a very good win for Jim Robertson from Orangewood, 21-10. So that's got back the loss of Petra Juice. Uh, so that's the Robertson brothers, one each then, Mike. That's right. Oh, he's left this well short now. Tommy should be in here. Yes, yeah, should have a chance. Oh, he's five yards short. And I'll tell you what, that's got to do some running. No, that's there. He'll come down the hill. I'm sorry, I'm looking at the wrong jack. Confused by the ends. <laughs> oh, there's another one adjacent to it. He's still short. He's about a yard so short, but... Is this better? No, this might pull round underneath, Mark, if it's not up. Now, will it come back? No. There, look at that, just at the side, but he's on. He's won it. Mm. So certainly, Tom McDickin needs to get in here because he knows very well if he doesn't, his opponent needs one for game. Yeah, he's got one and there. And he's got it. An important bowl there for the Bedworth player. So he moves on to 13. 19-13. At the same time, in game number six, Steve Jones leads Billy Pitt, 2017. Right, now we just received some further scores away, which I'll give you shortly. I'm still concentrating on this end. Where Tom and Dickin has just gone through the end there. And David East looking for two. He's gone a bit narrow. Tommy signalled two there, didn't and he? Tom McDickin, yes. yes, a signal two. A good two there for the North Midlands player. So that's 19-15, he trails. Results coming from the away leg of the middle four show that um, S. Berry's got nine against Kevin Keary. Alan Gilverfillens won 21-16. Paul Lambs won 21-16. And Richard Burdett has got 17 against David Webb. But North Midlands are still in front in the away leg by 11. Now back to this game again here with Tom Dickin walking down, anxiously following his bowl. He knows he's still struggling. He's got nice weight, Mark. Lovely weight. Yes, good ball. Good wood. Starting to find a little bit of form now. And David East certainly won't want to be short. He 
Yes, this looks a fair ball. If it'll stop. Can he come through that gap? Ooh. He could have won it. He's got the two, two required. Once. And yeah, so yeah, that's balls. another victory to Staffordshire in the shape of David East, 21. Tom McDickin, 15. Right, now we are covering the final encounter of this afternoon's match. And this is between Richard Everett, who has the blue hat. And he's playing the Midlands number one player, that is in my opinion, Peter Varney. And Richard Everett has scored the first two. The state of the match at home is that here at the Bedworth Club, the North Midlands lead by nine. And away in Staffordshire, the North Midlands lead by 11. That's 20 overall. Before we concentrate fully on this match, a comment from Bob Halligan on how he feels the match is going at the moment. Well, it's a bit closer than I thought it would be, Mike. I mean, I was looking for 40. Uh, we suppose we could still get... I was thinking of 40 at home, but <laughs> we've only got nine at the moment. Staffordshire have uh, equipped themselves to this green a lot better than I thought they would. Now, in connection with Peter Varney and Richard Everett, there are some very interesting facts here. And one of the most interesting is that Richard Everett, in 1986, was one of the most talented young players in Crown Green Bowls. He won in that year the Staffordshire Junior Merit, the Junior All England and the Junior Waterloo. It was hoped at that time that he would go on to win many more top competitions. And that hasn't materialised for various reasons. His opponent, Peter Varney, however, lost in the final of the Junior All England many years ago, but he has gone on to, to win top competitions, including this year the biggest prize in Midlands Bowls, the £700 first prize in the Ansells Open. So this should be a classic encounter, because make no mistake about it, this man Everett, a young lad, he has his own particular ways of playing the game. His father, of course, won the Waterloo Handicap. He is certainly a very talented player. And playing number 12 for his county must be a tremendous amount of pride, both for his father and, of course, for himself. But he knows very well that he'll have his work cut out against this man, who lives around the corner and is undoubtedly one of the Midlands' top players, very highly rated in the North, Peter Varney. I'm sure you would agree with that, Bob. Yes, totally your awesome, assumption, yes. And, of course, Everett has started like he hopes he will continue. He started looking at that jack. He's already 3-0 up. And he's got a good one on. Questions at times over Richard's temperament, but no one can take away the undoubted skill of this young player who's performed very, very well at the Waterloo on numerous occasions. And there's two bowls. Those two are probably words. the closest two mm. bowls we've seen by any one player all afternoon. It wouldn't surprise me if Peter doesn't fire here. And he is. Here it goes, the varnish strike. Split the two, collect one, hope for oh. something, miss the lot. Five nil down. But... I think it's true to say that Peter Varney is too experienced a player. He knows very well that Everett is playing well, but he'll wait his opportunity. His knowledge of the green will probably make him move the mark. But Everett, very talented young player, Bob. Yes, without a doubt. But there's just a small remark, Mike. We, we were talking about dress earlier on. And he's dressed immaculate, as the Staffordshire team are, all equipped with the same colours and that. Then he goes and wears a, a peak cap, which I should imagine he would need it for the sun. But look how he's wearing it, making himself look a bit of a... Yes, I, I must agree with you. I, I, I keep saying, I said in articles that I've written, we've got to improve our image in this game. And let's face it, it is the top players, it's the players that create the publicity that gives us our image. Mm. I mean, he's and wearing I, a... And I always make the point, Brian Duncan is the number one. He creates the image because mm. he always dresses immaculately. Mm. But what looks sillier than wearing a peak cap round the other way? I'm afraid I must go along with that. And that's a shame.
Pete Varney, of course, left-handed, like Tom McDickin. In the bowls business himself. He's gone through there, though. Again, and Richard may be looking for another two. And he's yeah, got it. Yes. He's on the same thing as I was early on about, on earlier about, Mike. The up and down the green. He strike a good weight. They take some beat in. Of course, Peter Vaughan has rescued this association not on many occasions in the past years in county matches with some superb single-figure scores. And, of course, I've said it before, he was the only player who won away in Yorkshire in the final last year for North Midlands, and he won the Martell Man of the Match Award for that performance. But I'll tell you one thing, he'll need to get in quickly against this lad. Because once he gets the weight, he's like that. Perfect. Oh, ball, that's one. beautiful Straight word. on the jab. Perfect line. See, any, uh, Peter will play up, and if he slides by, he'll be facing two. Yes, you're not that far in front from Bob that you can afford a, a bad card. Not I'm now. not suggesting at this moment that that's what will happen, but because um, Peter's too far. That's what I say, is he's played the yard over and missed. I think he feels that he's too heavy with this. He feels, because he was clapping his hands as he delivered it. Maybe he's applauding the shot, by Bob, but he has opened it up a little bit, I must admit. Well, Peter's certainly up, he must be, he's got to play something out. But he hasn't slid by both of them. Two more to Richard Everett. Nine nil. He leads. This is a bit of a shaker bomb. It certainly is. Yes, I suppose in the the last what seven, ten years he must have the best record for us. Of course, Richard has won the um, Burton Open, and let's not remember, and I'm, I'm not prejudging anything, but last year in this corresponding match, playing number 12 for Staffordshire, he won 21-7. Did Richard? And one of the reasons that he achieved so much as a young player is one of the reasons that Brian Duncan is the game's number one. And the word you look for is the word consistency. And this player is consistent. He's playing up at Peter now, because Peter's just gone. Peter oh, he's played him out. him out. There you are. There you are. He may have knocked him out mm. and left himself too. Now, he should have left too much room for Peter Varney, but whether he has or not, when you're struggling, it all depends on whether you take the opportunities. But I do think that Peter's taken that one. On this count, yes. and he has. He'll be relieved to get that one. We're off the mark. Now let's see if he can use the green a bit. I think he was looking in this bottom corner, but somebody's already just beat him to it. Of course, I said earlier that. Richard has performed well in the Waterloo. His father, Jack, is only one of two Midland players. The other, the late Bill Heineke, ever to win the Waterloo handicap. And has been brought up in the bowling tradition, Richard. Unfortunately, Peter has delivered the type of bowl that he doesn't want. And I'm sure that Richard won't make the same mistake. He seems to have a nice weight. It's how far he's going to go by if he does get over that hill. I don't think it's going to run as far as Peace, but it goes a long way down here, Mike. Yes, that's true. In fact, he's <laughs> nearly gone past. <laughs> Yeah. 
No. And that's and he stopped. <laughs> it's all over. Here it goes. On a, on a dry day, Mark, that'll leave him belly down to the bottom, that yeah. would. And Richard's chasing this one up. Well, if he gets over the hill, he's won it. It's a breath job now. Isn't it agonising? You can't, you can't touch it, and yet you want it to stop. <laughs> I thought if he just got over the hill, he would win it. So, Richard, 10-1. Just right in front of us there. I see David Rawlings just gone two down to be 12-9 down. We could do with some shots on the board, Mike. That's right, definitely. Yes, because looking at the away card, as an outsider, I think Staffordshire have some strength in that leg at home. The likes of Mel Evans, Ray Leith and Alan Matthews. Um, that's not detrimental to the North Midlands yet, lads, but... Um, there's certainly some experience there. We shall see. <laughs> <laughs> it always amazes me, you know, Bob, when I sometimes make predictions in this game and people pick me up on it. I often say, well, don't they make predictions in other sports? Don't do the pools every week or back horses. <laughs> Isn't yeah. that a prediction? Oh, well. Richard's waving this bowl again here. We often get it with these commentaries, Mike, when you're saying, oh, I think the wood's going to go through or something, it ends up a toucher, and they, they can't wait to get hold of you to tell you. That's <laughs> right. They always tell you when you make a mistake, Bob. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's a good bowl from Good Peter wood. Barney. I think he's only one. I'm not sure, I didn't quite catch his signal there, but we shall soon know. And I was correct, it was just one, 10 2. He could do with holding on to this jack a bit, see if he can get a better weight, and Richard loses. Well, one thing I do think that Peter will not do what I predicted perhaps uh, McDickin and Harry should have done, and that's gone into the corners, because this lad certainly can bowl the corners. I'm not suggesting he can bowl the corners on this screen. What I'm saying is he is known for being a good corner bowler. So, therefore, I would think that Peter's not going to take that chance. And he's certainly got a reasonable bowl there. He's got a nice delivery, hasn't he, Mark? Very oh, yeah. smooth. That's right. And I'll tell you what, he's not far away. I'd say he's low. You're yeah, right, Bob? coming yes. back towards us determined their facial expressions of Richard Everett. Peter knows he's got to get these twos, it's twos that win bowls matches. I would say he's two on. Yes, he's two there, but... Um, now Richard's got to get a bit higher up. Which I think he is. He could be higher up this, he's higher up this time, yes. But is his weight... Is his wrong? weight going to stop him? Gone through. Two. Two to Peter Varney. And let's have a look at some of the other scores. Bob in these last four ends. Yeah. His home leg. Uh, starting off with game number 11, which, unless my eyes deceive me, shows that Joey Irons is 12-4 down against the man they call Pon. To to Pon, that's what they call him. Black Country. Lives down the road from me. It's not Andy Petford, as indicated on the programme. It's his father. Tony Petford from the Amory Club, who plays in actual fact in the Warwick and Worcester Association for the George, who last year won the Premier title. A very, very good bowler. Another father and son combination. Now, game number 10 shows Steve Bennett, 6 4 up against Derek Cox. And then the man himself, David Rawlins, who's not having a very happy afternoon by the look of it against Billy Bowater because he trails Bill 13 9. We're not doing very well in these last four, Mark. No, that's true. You are saying the fortunes of bowls. We watched Joey bowl a splendid game, didn't we, at Nudigate to beat that's Alan right. Thompson. Cracking game. But I don't think, if my memory serves me right, um, that Joe was successful on the screen last year, but I'm just checking my records. I might, might be wrong there. Um, no, I beg his pardon. He, well, he did. He won 21-17. 
Yes, he beat Andrew Kearns. But as you say, he bowled very well at Nudiger. Now back to this game with Pete Varney. Mm -hmm. This big swinging mark in the saucer again. The jab, Can he yeah, stop? Pete. Hit it. He's got it. Maybe two on here. The pressure's now turned on to Richard. He's running this one up. He must fancy it the way he's running it. I say he's short. He's going to bend round and miss. He's gone away. Yeah, he's short. Peter scores again. He gets another two. Trails now 10 6. Starting to slow the game down now, Peter. Far more experience to go running about the green like Richard Everett. Uh, he's going for a slightly different mark this time, Mike. He's come 10 yards further on. Uh, anything past this is going to whistle away. I understand that last Sunday one of the outstanding performances in the big competition at Patricroft was by Peter Varney, who qualified there with a tremendous 31 single figure win against Freddie Hume, one of the top players of yesteryear in the North. And that demonstrates the oh, sort look of that. that Varney. Beautiful lead on that, Mark. Varney can put up. He's now got Richard under pressure. Look at this now, he's going to come down the alley and he'll whistle into the ditch. In he goes. It's this left-hander up the side of the crown again, Mike, isn't it? You've got to That's right. find your own line. He's a bit heavier this time. Yes, Peter won't be very pleased with this if he goes off the green. Mind you, stop, he'll stop every firing, I would think. Well, he's a brave man who wants to fire at that, isn't he? Yes, he is. He's That's a true. bit more thinking of saving one. Well, I'll tell you what, he's going to have some difficulty saving with this, Bob. I don't know, he's well up the top, so... He's well up the top. Now he'll start coming down. He's got a chance of winning it. Look Ooh. at that. I told you. Hey, oh. I'll make the excuse the sun's in mind. <laughs> but it was a wonderful attempt, yeah. I must admit. Give the lad his credit. I think Peter's starting to take control, Bob. He's definitely finding a nice weight, isn't he? Mm. Remember, he was 10-1 down. He's now 10-7 down. Two here, and he's right back in it. Oh, lovely wood. Mm. See, it just underneath, and it comes down this saucer. Look at it running down. Yes. Richards still not there and Peter could still be shot calling on all his experience now Peter Varney always a lot of responsibility on the last player on the green he won't be very pleased with that I don't think much shorter than his previous bowl at that end, and he's Everett running it up again. Well, he looks short to me going across the green. He does look short. Yeah, he's moved well away. Oh, he's short. He's bending away now. He'll be coming back towards him. You try it. Well, he's looking pretty disconsolate. He's uh, there, ain't Everett. there isn't a lot near this jack, is there? <laughs> no, there's not. Had to get the sheep dogs out.
Oh, he's conceded, Richard has it too, Peter. So Peter pulls another one back, now 10-8 to the Staffordshire youngster. This moment in time, still some results not going in your favour, Bob, because at number 11, Joey Irons trails 13-8 to Tony Petford. And Dave Rawlins is still struggling after his holiday. He trails 14-11. Mm. In a very slow game at number 10, Steve Bennett and Derek Cox. Well, there's nothing in that game. Derek Cox leading 7-6. Peter's played about, what, two, two yards, three yards through on this, his first lead. He's given Richard Everett a, an opportunity here. An opening. Which he's taken, Mike. Yes, with a good ball. A very good oh, ball. Oh, lovely ball. Just touched the jack. Peter's got to be careful here because if he, he goes too far through, he'll give Richard the opportunity of scoring an excellent two. Well, he's chosen to play up at his bob, I think. Well... He wouldn't go far through if he if he is. If anything, he's a bit low, isn't he? Look, right. he's dropping low. Now this is an opportunity that Richard hasn't had for some time. And this looks to be two on the card to me. Well, he hasn't got to get too near, has he? The a right. bit far away, Peters. Disconsolate there, Peter Vaughan. Mm. Just when he was beginning to Just claw his way back. Really putting the pressure on, he bowls a poor end. 12-8 now to Richard Everett. Complete change of mark here, of course. Similar to what Richard Everett was bowling much higher up the green before. But he looks narrow to me, Bob. I don't know. He's, he's got dead weight. He has, yes. Just two yards on the side, that. yeah. Peter looks better. He's got the better line, hasn't he, altogether? Mm, good ball. Mm. That's a good wood there. He needs a correction ball now from the Staffordshire player. Well, he's not slow. Oh. He needs to gather something. He's on the outside of Peter. Mm. Just half a wood out, Mike. He'd have took that. That's right. Peter's here again. He's in for two good ones That's here. Good one. Yeah, got the oh, two back. Two perfect ones. That's right. Yet to take the lead, Peter Varney, but he's within two now. 12-10, Richard Everett leads. Watching this bowl in tight, watching the bowl intently. You just get too high up there, Mike, and it's, there's like a little channel runs all down that side of the green, and you just don't get the bend into it. No. It gives your opponent a chance to. Mm. But, step I, in. but I think he's done the same. He has. In fact, he's done it even worse. He's done it worse. But whether he'll catch him out again, I don't know. So it's on the whereabouts now on that slope That's he's better. got to curl round. He's a bit overpaced, eh? but it'll go down this hill. Ooh. Yes. No, it stopped. 
Well, he's wide enough again, you know. Yes, he could go down the other way. He could have left a silly two, as they call it here. Yeah. Yes. Yes. That was a bad mm. two. I didn't think he'd possibly follow his first one out so, there. Game number 12, 12 across. Here we go, down into that big saucer again. Well, this is a good comeback, uh, Bob. Yes, it is, isn't it? Mm. I wish I was so confident against uh, about some of these other players. <laughs> Joey Hines is 17-8 down. Rawlins is 18-11 down. Things are looking a bit black. Yes, after being in the lead all the way through, things are slipping, slipping away. Slipping but. away a little bit. <laughs> nice lead from Peter there. That's right. Is it? This is short, I think. Oh, this is going to start curling away. Look, short it. Oh, it'll go back on itself. You actually have to bowl past the jack on this, Mark. Mike. Coming through the back door. Where's this one going? Yes, oh, this he's, is all right. He's a different line altogether. Another good bowl. But it's still a bit now. He's watch it go away now. So it always just curls away. Still got to both be beaten, you know? Yes, all oh, their fair woods on that mark, no he doubt. Again, Everett, running them again. Now he's got a better line this time. What's his weight's like? Does he run? It's slowing down, isn't it? No. Left him two for the first two. time in the match. Peter Varney takes the lead, 14-12. Pete has this theory, Mike, that even though he was, what, nine, ten one down, ten was he? Down. Ten one down. If he thinks he's bowling well enough, he, he doesn't get sort of too perturbed because he knows when he gets hold of the jack that he's going to perform. It's being ten one down, bowling bad woods that you've got to worry. I've experienced it, Bob. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> So now after that he's gone and bowled a, what does that be saying, no ball, is it? That's right. <laughs> well, if he's done it. Well, Richards ain't no better. That's right. He can't even beat it. Oh, blimey. <laughs> Neither of those would count, I would think. No. But Pete running this one in, so he must fancy it. Well, it's no good. It was right underneath. That's right. Mm. Surely Richard will get one. Oh, my, this don't look up at all. Unless he's high up the green, he's going to fall back down here amongst these. Close look. Well, look at that last. Balls, but yeah. they are well away. St. Bernard to get drunk trying to find them, oh, Mike. Richard Everett's got the one he wanted. It's a bad one, but it looks the same on the card. <laughs> so it's 14-13 now to Peter Varney. Well, he went two none down here three ends ago, and here he comes back. Got better. I think he's short and wide here. Yeah. Mm. That won't be good enough, I don't think. Mind you, Peter's going the other way. Can you see that? Well, this was nothing like the end they bowled previously down no, here, Mike, was it? Definitely not. Pete would think he's going to get one here out of this lot. Oh, he's wide. He's 
very difficult. Can't see, they spread about a bit. I think they, Pete's indicated he fancies his own a little bit. One to Pete, no. one to uh, Richard. Conceded one to Richard. So we're now back to 14 across. Dave Rawlings at the moment, trails 19-14, and Joey Hines trails 20-10. Oh. Well, this is going to put him in front when this 20-10 card comes off, is it? Or level. But at the moment, it's also Steve Bennett, who is 12-7 up in his game with Derek Cox. Richard's just bowled a cracking lead. Yes, he seems to have bowled this type of mark well this afternoon. So that game has been completed and Tony Petford has scored a tremendous victory for Staffordshire. He's defeated Joey Hines 21-10. One of the most half so players in bowls is Tony Petford Bob. But he, he certainly <laughs> bowls well. Oh, I've seen him round the circuit, round the Midlands. He's a good bowler. L lost in the final of the Chadsmore Classic Invitation Tournament three years ago to Brian Duncan. Yeah. Where's his son today? Is he his playing son's or? playing for Warwick and Worcester against Cheshire. And of oh. course his son last year was the Warwick and Worcester Individual Merit Champion. Yeah. Well, he got two out of that and he's coming back down this end and he fancies himself down here. That's right. And you can't blame him. He's in the lead again now. 16-14. He's got a good wood. Yes, a very good bowl. Fair wood there. Still coming. Yes, yeah, only about a foot short. Good wood. In front. Pete's a little bit wide, a little bit overweight. He might just trickle round and come round on that mark if he stops dead weight. Ah, yeah, oh, and this fell in. Does. Yeah. That's the only way you can beat these woods in the way on a perfect mark, and it might. That's right. Perfect weight and just try and slide by. Away. This one isn't far away either. Go back now. It is owning. No, it won't. Oh, oh that's a good bowl. Could have won it. It's won yeah. it. Yes. There's been some very good it bowling might in pay Peter now to play overweight and see if he can take the jack through for two. That's right. That's what he's doing. He's coming down thumb, I think. Straight at it. See if he can pick that up for two. This is a classic shot. Oh, yes. Oh, that's, that's the shot. That's the way to play it. Applause yeah. from the North yes. Midlands crowd there. Mm. So now the pendulum swings. 16 across. That's a confidence booster, Bob. Mm. It's nice to see that shot instead of the firing one, isn't it, Mark? <laughs> Last time I played one of those, Bodice here was queen. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to tell me you played one yesterday. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's just slung it off, has he? No, it's just no, stopped, stopped on. on. Well, it looks like at the moment, looking at the scores, that the reliable Steve Bennett is doing the rescue act for North Midlands. He's leading 14-7, and you need that card, Bob. Mm, badly. Peter's pulled up about three or four yards short on this one. Mm. Uh, Andy isn't going to, but he's gone wide. He could come down a bit. No, he might have won. He's got a bit low, and it's pegged down. Crucial end, this. It's got a lot of work to do. It's got a lot of work to do. He's done it. Mm, it's fairly wide. It's whether Richard adjusted, he's got to stop up above the jack. Mm, he likes it. He's low again. Oh, it might. 
Very difficult. It's roll, still rolling roll back. back. And he shook his head, so... He might be two down here, you know. Mm. Oh, I don't know. He's pointed at his own wood as if he fancies... He's a good judge of a measure, young Everett. I've noticed that before, and I know his father thinks he is, so... Uh, well, I don't know whether he's pulled that out to concede it or pulled it out to look for two. Measures to Tony Green, the man in black. He's called on again to make a decision. But in actual fact, Tony Green was the referee for the final. He was, yes, at the, uh, down at the Camden Green. Mm -hmm. That's right. I think he was third choice today, wasn't he? Uh, yes, he is third. Right. Two's cried off. I suppose right. to referee on this green, Mike, you've got to have one leg shorter than the other, so... That's right. Perhaps Tony has. <laughs> <laughs> this is an important measure for both players. Nobody's signalled yet. Oh, they have now. Peter Varney. 17-16, he leads. But I'll say this, whoever wins this, from Staffordshire's point of view, uh, they'll be pleased with this scoreline, even if Richard doesn't score any more. I think they're bowled well. Bowled well as a team, haven't they, Mike? Yes, they have. I know one or two of them have seen the green, but that doesn't mean a lot. It's been a couple of years ago. Gonna stop, Bob. It's gonna have a job. Don't press the jacket, won't. If he goes over, it's gone. Yes, it's gone. It will stop. And it, run like mad down that part. Well, this certainly won't go off. Oh no, he's gonna challenge Pete to get by it, isn't he? That's right. It's going to make a few more yards yet. And as we speak, Billy Bow Water needs just one against David Rawlings. 2017 he leads, but at the same time, the man in the white hat, Steve Bennett, also from Varney's club, Ornchwood, is playing well and winning his game 15-7. Peter Varney, meanwhile, is attempting to pass that bowl of Richard Everett, which he's done, and now puts the pressure back on his opponent. Mm. Though it stopped a couple of yards short, it's still going to be a hard wood to beat. Richards give it its chance. And this looks a nice pace to This me. looks fairly nice. Oh, I think this is the winner with a miss. Oh, there's oh. bad luck. He certainly wanted that one. That's 18-16 now to Peter Varney. Maybe may be getting a little bit at Richard there, with Richard gesticulating to the crowd. Good Pete's put a good lead up, morning. yeah. Short, miles short. Such a push up here, Michael. I mean, they're going what over 50 yards. That's right. Peter's running after this one. No two here will put him within sight of victory. There's two fair woods there. That's right. Surely Richard's not going to be short he's this time. Not short no, this. he's he's up this time. Whether he saved one is debatable. Yes, he saved one. So, Peter Varning, 1916. Dave Rawlings still fighting away. He trails 2019. And Steve Bennett leads 15-8.
Hey, Peter's persevering with this mark again up in the top. Mike. Yes, he is. Right, he's bowled a fair wood here. Yes, that's one of the two. Ah, that's a good boys. wood. Good wood. Is this one going? It's not. No. no. So a wonderful chance now for Peter Varney. Remember, it was 10 1 behind. And since that lead, Everett's yep. only scored six. And this one ain't slow. He wants to really stop in and make him play. Oh, that won't be a good. That, that will not be a happy Peter Varney when he sees where that ball's finished. Isn't. And he's asking Peter to indicate whether it's two. Very really difficult to tell. Can't tell. Way out. Long way away. Long way. He can either put the wood down on the mat and go and have a look himself. I'm a firm believer, you know, Bob, that when the game's like this, the way to find out is to go and have a look. Go yourself. and have a look yourself. Mm. Many people assume that it's the referee's responsibility to tell no. you wrong. That's not his role. No. I mean, if he misses, it's game shot if he's two down, obviously, but... That's right. You thought he'd go and have a look. He can't make his mind up. No, he's bowling it. Well, he has got room to save, at least. But tell you what... He's not slow. That's going to go a fair way down there. There's a, there's a bank that it'll come down off. There he's gone out, so they're going to have measures for two for game there. Dave Rawlings has lost his game. 21-20. Good performance there by Billy Bowater from Dudley Dell. He's rung the chimes this afternoon with a 21-20 win. Very good. And now we're calling for the measures here. So it's a very important measure here. This should, could see Peter Varney in the winner's enclosure, as they say. Short, I think. Two. No, it's two. So therefore, it's Peter over. Varney came back. He's won 21-16. That was a tremendous performance. Right, and so we've come to the end of this match this afternoon, and it's been victory for the North Midlands, who've won at home by 11 against Staffordshire, and very narrowly won away by three in the venue at Ensford. 14 overall. Your comments, Bob? Too close for comfort, Mark. I thought we would win a lot more than that. But I th in saying that, the Staffordshire team bowled extremely well here, and obviously by the results, our away teams bowled very well there. But uh, I really thought we'd win by more than that here. We've only won by 11. But that's all due credit to the Staffordshire team, isn't it? That's right. And the final summing up, of course, with Yorkshire having beaten North Midlands in the opening match and now playing Staffordshire. I'm afraid, from a Midlands point of view, it's a case of hoping because I don't see Yorkshire failing today against Cumbria. And this Staffordshire side, in my own opinion, isn't strong enough. I have with me the two respective team managers of the county sides today, Peter Darby and Mick Robinson. Peter, must be mixed feelings for you. You opened up with a good win against Cumbria. You've played well here today to lose only by 11, and yet, disappointingly, you've had a home performance on a green you gambled with. Has the gamble not come off? Well, I'm very disappointed, Michael. Um, we've played today and lost by 11 against a team who, was, who got to the final last year of the Crossfield Cup. We've come away from home. We've lost by 11, we've beat Cumbria in the first game, we've done all the hard work and unfortunately the uh, result that we expected at home to win by about 35 shots has not materialised. So to say I'm disappointed uh, is an understatement.
And you hope that in the next game, of course, which is against the winners last year, Yorkshire, that you can pick it up and do the Midlands a real favour. Well, when I've got over the disappointment of today, obviously, I still have time to reflect on uh, what's happened today and what's the next thing to do for the next match. But it's very difficult when you've really worked hard and got a side together that you thought could uh, achieve the results that uh, are necessary to get to the semi-final of the Crossfield Cup. Obviously, against Yorkshire, um, we have to get down to the drawing board uh, and work hard to select a side that we feel can beat Yorkshire. I wish you luck in that. If I can turn now to you, Mick. In your first game, you did well, although you lost against Yorkshire, narrowly to 16. You obviously are elated by today's performance, but I would think not particularly overjoyed in the fact that your home side here only established an 11-shot lead. What are your comments about that? Well, I, today I think uh, they've, they've bowled remarkably well, um, Staffordshire. You know, uh, in the last three years we, we've, we've had a, a good record. We're a little bit disapp uh, disappointed in the fact that uh, we lost to Yorkshire by 16. Um, but then again, we're cutting down, you know, their scores uh, uh, relatively to a low score now. And um, hopefully... Um, that Staffordshire can go along and do us a favour, as you say, and uh, then put us maybe back in the running. Um, but uh, overall, uh, full credit to Staffordshire. I, I think they've bowled a very difficult green today. And uh, on the other hand, I think our lads, like they have done over the last few years, carried us very, very well away. And yeah. all credit to them again today for bringing us not uh, just... You know, keeping the game close, but coming away with a three-shot win. Marvellous. Well, I'd like to congratulate both sides on a, a very, very good performance. And let's hope that somewhere along the lines, Yorkshire doesn't slip up and one of you can go through. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Yeah.